back to JavaScript Playground. In the previous video, we created some variables and learned about naming conventions for variables. So if you haven't watched the video, then check it out. I'll add the link in the description below. In today's video, we'll learn about JavaScript numbers. So let's write some code. Let's head out to CodePen. Let's create a new pen. So today's video is about JavaScript numbers. So in today's video, we will create some variables to store numbers, both integer and decimal type. We'll see how they are stored in the memory, the memory allocation part. We'll do some operations on these numbers. We'll also see two different types of numbers in JavaScript. So JavaScript also has these two numbers, infinity and not a number. So we'll look into that as well. So let's get started. Let's expand the JS part. Let's bring up the console. Because again, we'll be printing most of the stuff here. So let's write a first variable. So where num1, let's give it a value 10. Let's write another variable. So where num2, let's give this a value 10.9. So this is my integer. And this is my decimal number. So JavaScript has this built-in function type of which when used on a variable returns the type of data stored in that variable. So let's try that. So type of num1 print this type. So console log. So it gives me number. Let's try it for number two. So num2, it gives me number. Also, let's just add this on the drop. So console clear so that every time my script runs, it clears the console before printing all the new data. Also in JavaScript, the semicolon is optional. It's preferred that you don't put it, so I'll also just remove. So we saw some examples of variables storing both integer and decimal number. So JavaScript always stores numbers as 64-bit floating point, where the number is stored in the first 52 bits, that is from 0 to 51. The exponent part is stored in the next 11 bits, that is 52 to 62. And the last one bit, that is 63rd is saved for the sign. All right, let's try some operations on these numbers. So let's just create another variable, say num3. Let's give it a value of 15. Let's create another variable which will store the sum of my two numbers. So sum is equal to num3 plus num1. Let's print it. So console log and sum. So it gives me 25. And for instance, if let's just add num2 as well. So num2. Now it gives me 35.9. Let's try subtraction. So variable difference is equal to num3 minus num1. Let's print it. So console log and diff. So it gives me 5. So 15 minus 10, we got the result 5. Let's try multiplication. So where mul um, num3 multiplied by num1. Let's print it. So console log mul. As you can see, so 10 into 15, 150. Let's also try division. So where div is equal to num3 divided by num1. Let's print it. So console log and div. So it gives me 1.5. So 15 divided by 10, we got the result 1.5. All right. So 
Let's try dividing a number with zero. Div by zero. So num three divided by zero. Let's print it. And it gives me infinity. So the result of this expression num three divided by zero is infinity. So as I told you in the beginning of the video, so the JavaScript has these two other numbers, infinity and NEN, not a number. We'll see that shortly. So let's just print the type of this as well. So type of div by zero, and it gives us number. So infinity itself is a number in JavaScript. Similarly, let's multiply by string. So for example, num3 multiplied by a. Let's print it. So multiply by string and it gives us an a n. That means it's not a number. So 15 multiplied by a is not a number. So let's check the type of this. So console log type of mul by string. So it gives us number. So even n a n is stored as a number. And that's a wrap for today. I'll add the link for this code pen in the description below for your practice. I hope this gave you a better understanding of JavaScript numbers. But if you have any doubts or queries, feel free to drop a comment below or reach out to me on Twitter. I'll add my Twitter handle in the description below. Bye and take care.